Hey everybody, this is Blue. Hope everybody's doing good tonight. I wanted to talk about map making. There are a lot of videos out there that want you to make all these fancy little maps. And I think they're giving some bad advice. Um, there are people that want you to make these maps that are highly artistic. They're beautiful. And but they're not functional in my opinion. Take a, this map right here. This is from a video by JP Covert or Covert, whatever his name is. And they are trying to convince you to buy their stuff because they're trying to sell you all these books on how to make all these cute little mountains and trees and all that. And I don't think that's functional. I believe that maps should be functional and so we have to find what works for us so that we can create more useful tools and if it doesn't work for you not a goddamn basement working for us but this goddamn suit doesn't work for me and this stinking tie and this goddamn shirt it doesn't work for me you see that's how I feel about his these pictures here because they don't work for me. It's too pretty to be useful. It's a lot of black ink. And how do you add names to something like this? You can't. You have to then have a separate piece of paper, a separate map to put in cities, to put in borders. Uh, and it just doesn't work for me. So, I have decided I was going to make a quick little video about this. Um, you can see right there, that's the basics of this map here. This is my main map that I created for my role playing game. This particular map is the size of two poster boards put together. And with a little ingenuity, I am able to turn that into something very, very useful. So on my wall, I can't show it to you right now, obviously, but I have my two poster board map of this. On that poster board is names of rivers, mountain chains, forests, continents, rivers, every geological name needed my oceans are named i got borders for the oceans it's a nicely detailed map and so i when i'm with the guys and we're playing the game i can go look at the map say you guys are here you're at the bostick mountains blah 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 and so we have a nice reference that we can use but there's no political on this so what I done was then, once I got this map done, where I was very happy with, I then got some cheap Dollar General paper, um, copier paper, because it's the next best thing to tracing paper because it's so damn cheap and thin. One second. And so I was able to lay down, uh, let's see, it was four. 12 sheets of paper on my boards and trace the outlines for all of the land masses that were on my base map. I then took each page and I scanned it off my printer and then using a program that I have, I was able to piece them all together and then, so then I have a digital image of my map like you're seeing here I'm able to pop that up at any point in time that I want to and whoops wrong one you can't do that with this you can't add anything to it that's where I'm having some problems with it so I created this map and I can now do whatever I want and save individual images of my base map and I was able to do this here this is my political map of my world 
I have 121 nations. I got them all numbered and so that I can easily go and, you know, reference anything, you know, for that nation, for that world. So with that, I was able to create a gazetter, which is a book about my world. Now, as you can see, I got, oh, come on now. This map, it's that map right there. I have the numbers. And then on the next to it, I got a list of every nation with its key cities because that is usually something that I need to know pretty quickly on my role playing. And then because this is a form book, what that means, blank form book, I've created pages right here that I could put information down for each nation. Like I said, I have 121 nations, so I have 121 of these pages. And basically, it just asks the basic information. Um, nation name, location, type of government, capital, key cities, population, size, and what makes the population. Because remember, we have fantasy races in here, so we might need to say that while 40% of this nation is human, they also got 20% that is dwarven. They have 10% that are Karnak, which are hobbits. And so you can give a good demographic of your nation. Um, languages spoke, resources, and shortfalls. You know, the, you might be like 101 that you can see. It's half of it's desert. And so they're going to have some shortfalls. They are going to always be short on water and such. And so you put that down. Then the rest of it, basically from here on down, is just blank lines to write down the war. Maybe a brief history of that nation and keynotes so that you can put it into your role playing. And like I said, I got 121 of these, but that's not all. Because you, I find it easier to have maps to put down interesting things. And so I was able to take my big two poster board map and convert it into this. And in my gazetter, I have 50 of these maps. And in it, I could put down anything like this particular map is abandoned cities. And so on there, there are X's into abandoned cities to know where they're at. And so I can put all this information in here and I could reference them um, at any point in time. So we can make a lot of good maps, making it simple, making it easy. So, you know, we were looked at JP's map, you know, he wants all these little individually drawn mountains and trees to represent forests and all that. And that doesn't work for me. So I use the lightest markers possible on my poster board so that I can write over it. So I can use every little bit of the map to put down interesting pits, bits of information. You know, like I say, the mountain names and lakes, rivers, I could put them all in there. You could not do that. You could not write anything on those mountains that he had on his map because, oops, because they're black. Look at, it's all black. It would make hard to add to. This map, while pretty, is not useful. This map, while not as pretty, is 100% more useful. Um, 
what's the process that I go through with making my maps? Well, it's pretty easy, actually. Um, I grab just some regular old scrap paper, uh, uh, printer paper, whatever, and I just start doodling. And I will get some ideas of the shapes I want my continents to be. And then you take the papers, you kind of move them around and try to see how they fit together. Um, because, you know, maybe these two continents, while they're unique and they look cool, should not be together. You sometimes need to kind of like match up some coastlines with mountains so that there is some rhythm, there is some a pattern, a system with your gaming map. Um, some people go a little bit weird on their maps and some things just don't make sense. They're so fascinated with putting peninsulas, capes, and bays in that, you know, it doesn't really look real. Yes, this is fantasy, and with fantasy we can do whatever we want, but we still need to have something match up. Um, let me go back to this one map. Okay, you see my mountains? I have long mountain chains. Um, I don't have a lot of mountains dotting every little square inch of this. I have some, I have small little areas where there's like some mountains in this one little area, but I also have these chains of mountains that go um, along the coast or through the coast. There show some consistency and then I could base my rivers from where the mountains are, you know, where the big lakes are at, thanks to mountains. And it helps make it more realistic and it will you'll find it to be more satisfying when you make your map because you have tinkered with it being small pieces of paper. And then you can sit down and put it on a large piece of paper like what I've done um, then you know if you convert everything like how I did you know scanning it and making it into one smaller map you can then take that file and put it online you can put it in the cloud you can process it through all the various um, RPG um, programs that they have out there um, I could put this on the one that I'm working on right now, um, but not quite yet. Just my advice for you, because I'm going to end the video real quickly, is don't be influenced or kind of burdened by all these people that want you to do all this elaborate stuff, because sometimes that elaborate stuff just takes too much time. Um, some of those maps that JP and all those make, they've said that it takes them like four or five hours to do. And just think of what you can do with that time, you know, writing stories for your game and all that. Um, this map, put it on the poster board, probably took me about 45 minutes. Um, a couple of hours to add terrain to it. So yes, it's a long process no matter what, but the way I do it, I feel is more flexible and you are able to do a hell of a lot more with it. Because like I said, I got this two poster board um, master map on my wall so that all the guys can see it. I have these um, medium sized maps. These are just two sheets of paper, very similar to what I've done with the poster board. And I am able to use this as a tinkering map. This is my map for my Tolkien world. And so I now have this and I'm trying to work on nations. Oh, yeah. Um, using the lighter markers you know you're going to use your light blues for your um, rivers streams lakes as you can see i got two tones of brown involved for mountains 
because you have your like your foothills, your small mountains, which is your lighter, your tan. And then the deeper, those are your high mountains. You know, we're talking like Everest and McKinley. So you can, you know, show where you got your mountain in this area and where the big mountains are. Um, you can see the mustard yellow, that's obviously desert. Um, greens, you can, I tried to just use a light green for all my woodlands. And then you don't have to buy fancy, just buy what works for you. And buy a purple pen. I use purple, as you can see on this map here, to draw borders. Purple stands out, you're not going to mix it up with the rivers and streams and all that. And since in a lot of fantasy games they do use rivers and streams as borders, you can then write this right on over or right next to those rivers and streams to show the border of it between nations. Um, I think that's pretty much all that advice I need to give everybody. Experiment. You know, find out what works for you. Um, it's kind of like crispy and crunchy here. You know, in a weird thing, a weird way, um, that's crunchy. Okay? They want you to spend hours building these maps that you can't use um, to put in other information like names of cities. I mean, where do you put, you know, the little mark, the little cross for a city, then put right down Kirith Ungol. You can't do it um, without it going on something else. And so this is crunchy for maps. And this is the one time where going crispy works because since I used lighter colors, well, whoops. Since I'm using lighter colors, as you can see there, that's a more finished version of my map with water that I used to print out for my maps in there. But you can see how easier it is. You can quickly see where all the mountains are, where the heavy, high mountains are, where the desert is. There's some hills and mountains and deserts. You can find them really quickly and you can write down notes, put down names anywhere on the map. You don't have to worry about screwing up some of the mountains you drew earlier. So anyway, that's my rant for tonight. I hope everybody has a wonderful night. Take care. Be at peace.